Greg and Josh are not paid critics. They are not experts, nor do they claim to be. They are just two nerds that love to talk about internet shows. However, they're still going to tell you about what they think. So sit down, relax, and enjoy the latest episode of All Queued Up. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of All Queued Up. Uh, if you're new to the show, we review shows tied to streaming services like Netflix, Amazon, HBO, Disney Plus, etc. I'm your host, Greg Dietz, and with me always is Maya Don Fisher and Betty Badger. How y'all doing today? Uh, doing good. Um, trying to make it through the day. And I also want to add that hopefully soon we will also be doing Hulu because there are some great shows on there that you guys have yet to see. We, 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 I, I mean, there's, there's a show on Hulu that I do want to watch. Uh, the, the, uh, the castle one, the Man in the High Castle, whatever it's called. Oh, that's on, that's Amazon. on Amazon. Oh, that's on Amazon. What was Nosferatu on? is on Hulu, and that's really good. Castle Rock is on Hulu. And Castle that's really Rock, good. that was the one I want to watch. That Harlots was is on Hulu, and that's really good. And uh, the Outsider. And I hear The Handmaid's Tale is really good, too. I've, the yeah, Handmaid's Tale is amazing. I've just never sat down to watch anything. And also, I'm fantastic today, by the way. <laughs> uh, I feel, fantastic. I feel, oh, feel it. Feel it. Thank you. Um, feel the glow. Yeah, yeah. It's It's been great. You know, a lot of... Uh, Still getting a lot of positive responses and everything. Uh, and then, of course, you know, our uh, our past two episodes, download counts have been really, really high uh, in the first week alone, let alone, you know, f- for the average. But the first week has been pretty amazing. Um, uh, so I'm happy about that. I was going to say, the episode from last week, uh, uh, I had my, uh, my dad listen to it, and he... He was absolutely fucking enthralled the entire time. And then he further said, like, it taught me things I had not, I didn't know about trans people. Like, he legit was, he legit learned a bunch of shit, which that's great. Yeah. Regardless of it just being my dad, I think that's what the episode definitely kind of showcased was uh, if you don't know things about the trans community, there you go. (laughs) There you fucking go. I mean, I learned yeah. things myself as well. I, I think, Greg, you probably did too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's still more I'd like to know. So if we could do it again sometime, that'd be great. Because if you guys are open to answering questions, that means that people who do have questions don't have to be embarrassed and bring it up to somebody not knowing if they're being rude or not, you know? So you guys mm-hmm. could, you know, tell us, <laughs> hey, no, don't do that. That's rude. But this is the answer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and me, I'm very where well, I'm very new to it, and I'm also like, I don't give a fuck. Just ask me. Yeah, I know I'm different than a lot of people. A lot of people are like, well, you know, you shouldn't ask this question if it's not something that you would have. Basically, if you if it's something that if somebody asked you would make you feel uncomfortable, you should probably yeah. not ask it. But for me, I don't care. I mean, I, I was talking to a friend yesterday, and I said, so, what's the penis situation going to be? And uh, I was like, well, for right now, I've not made a final decision on that because it's too soon. I said, I'll evaluate my mental health in a couple of years, and we'll, we'll go from there. So you know, how's your it, penis it, doing, by the way? That's what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and... and, and I said, uh, well, I kind of did. I was like, yours all right? I was like, yours all right? He's like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And I also, also, I want to clarify that when I say you guys, I'm not meaning it in a male sense. uh I, I did grow up half the time in the North. So that's just what I call everybody is either y'all or guys. That's it. So it's one of those. It's one of those all-encompassing terms, you know, similar to dude. I think dude dude is very gender gender neutral. Yeah, I use dude for everyone. I know that there are some people out there who who don't like, who who look at dude and guys as non-gender neutral terms. Mm -hmm. And if if I do call you dude and it is 
uh, not something that you want to be called because you feel it is uh, gender uh, conformative, let me know and I will adjust my language as best. You I know, can. Ed Ed said it best. I'm a dude. He's a dude. She's a dude. Because we're all dudes. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? I can't. I can't fucking believe you brought up Good Burger. I can't fucking believe you brought up Good Burger. Like fucking somehow you had to bring all that into my fucking world again just by mentioning it. I appreciate that, Maya. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, I'm I'm the ever I'm the ever brightening enigma of your day. <laughs> did y'all watch Saved by the Bell? Of course, I did. I did. I, did I even watched the first season when it was called uh, when it was originally going to be called Good Morning Miss Bliss. You know that weird freshman season. Yeah, that was strange. Or eighth grade, that. whatever it was. There's a video that has the principal in it, and I can't remember what it's called, but when I think of it, I'll send it to you. So, anyways, are we going to talk about the boys first or Lovecraft Country? Uh, I was going to say let's do boys first just because it comes out earlier in the week. Um, but uh, I also want to mention to the audience that we did not watch Ratchet this week, like I said in the last week's episode, uh, mainly because the lives are busy and whatnot. So, we're going to hold off until next week for that. Um, but uh, but yeah, what we're going to talk about today is boys and Lovecraft Country. But also, beyond that, uh, Betty recently watched all of Watchmen, which, if you remember, Maya and I watched and reviewed when it was coming on, when it was on air just this last year. Um, so we're going to get Betty's opinion on this show. Um, and I think her opinion is going to be very interesting because she has had little to no knowledge of the comic prior to watching the show. So yeah, very excited about that. Um but yeah, first, let's get into the boys episode. Was it six? Yes. Yes. Episode six. Uh, yeah, this episode was a little bit lighter, I feel like, than the last few episodes. Like, it's still uh, had heavy stuff, but... There was a lot of... You, you got to see a lot more... There are some very deep collusions going on in this Uh. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's like it, everybody's kind of, you know, being a traitor to everybody else. Oh, yeah. It's like when uh, Deep and uh, Maeve were looking for the black box, you know, did you ever see that happening? Her and him working together. And the camera that the Deep found. Right. So, I mean, that's going to play a big part. And then you had a train in there. You know, and he's up there in that church shit. I don't. I, what in the fuck is going on? I'm sure the Scientologists <laughs> are finding, trying to find some way to sue these people. I'm sure they are. And oh, they're probably going to try it. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's funny because I think we talked about it last week or the week before. But um, very much to me, it's it's like I do see the the Scientology implications, but I'm just like, oh, that's every religion. Like that's how I see it because that's just how I'm wired when it comes to religion. Um, but the, the Scientology stuff is definitely more prevalent just because Scientology is like you can only go to hospitals that Scientologists say you can. Mm -hmm. All of the very cultish shit. But um, uh, the one thing about this episode that I think I was most surprised about was uh, Stormfront's little surprise at the end. Oh, so, uh, just a, just a dash, to just, a, just a dash of Nazism. <laughs> just a dash. Oh yeah, because she was born in 1919 in Berlin. Yeah, and she showed him the picture of her and her daughter, and he thought it was her grandmother, and it's her daughter, and she's dead. And then she started getting all racist and shit, and she wants to kill all the minorities. So you know, yeah. and uh, apparently yeah, she also that was... explained that the racism is when they first started uh, the B, they gave it to uh, minorities Figured, uh, the, uh, oh. as subjects to see what would happen. She was the first successful subject, from what I understand. Yeah. And I don't know how she's managed to live as long as she has, looking as good as she does, but damn. <laughs> Respect, girl. You know? <laughs> I mean, I hope I look half as good as her when I'm 100. If I live that long, no, I'll definitely be dead. Um, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just, I was, I, cause that's definitely as far as I know. And again, I haven't read the entire series, so I can't say whether or not it is, but that's not in the comic. And I love that that's not in the comic because now that's a new element for me to enjoy the show with. Um, and again, I know that there's people listening to this who have probably read the entire series. If it is part of the comic, great. I just don't know that it is. Was Lamplighter in the comic? Yes. He was definitely I, a character in the comic. Yeah, I find him I love how I love how they've got Sean Ashmore, who was Iceman in the X-Men movies, playing a fire-based character now. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I know. We were laughing about that last night. I was like, wait a minute. Is that Jeff looked at me? Yeah, I was like, that's freaking weird, but yeah. Um, also, um, Starlight, she had her first kill. Yep, she, did she kill the guy? Yeah, 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 he was dead. He did, he All did, right. dead. I think, I, it, I, uh, oh, oh, oh. I think it's gonna take a very hard emotional toll on her. Oh, for oh sure. yeah. I mean, because I, I took it that she just knocked the guy out and gave him a concussion because of the blood. But I guess the blood was also an indicator that he was dead. I just wasn't sure. Yeah, typically um, if you have blood coming out of your ears like that, you ain't living. Well, that's why I said concussion. Not for long. Was, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, he's like, if he's not dead by, by the throwback and, and landed on the ground and, and, ear, and blood coming out of his ears, he's definitely like not getting up in a long time off of that street and it's not he's not going to be able to get to a hospital any any yeah. soon. So um uh yeah like when they got into the car and there was a there was a baby seat in the back seat like yeah like, fuck me. Um what but about I love the that Cindy scene. girl is What's she that? in the comics Cindy the one who basically nullified Starlight's powers for a minute uh, when uh, Huey got shot and he, she couldn't fix him, and Cindy had done something. And, oh no, she, know, she killed no, all it the. Wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't that. Uh, it nullified her powers. There was no electricity for her to to draw from. Oh, so she's got something to do with that. Yeah, I'm very curious about her. So. Um, yeah, it was because the guy that the guy that was out in the field and used his like shockwave before Butcher shot him. Uh, like cut out the electricity of the vein, so there was nothing for her to grab onto to heal him or to cauterize the wound. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say that the um the conversation that Billy and her had when driving Huey to the hospital um about her, but like basically proving that there's an ambiguity when it comes to good and evil. Like, how far are you willing to go for your cause, whether it's good or bad? And that's when she told them they're nothing alike. Right. Yeah, she's like, fuck you. I'm not like you. And I don't blame her. You no, like, uh, that, like, one of the big things about the comic that you have to keep in mind is, and in and, and the show as well now at this point, um, Billy is not a character to be idolized in any way, shape, or form. Oh, no. He's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah. Um, I love him as a character, but Jesus Christ, Billy is kind of a fucking yeah i wouldn't actor. emulate him not uh, absolutely not i mean because he's a bigot he legitimately is a bigot oh yeah i mean look at what he said about his bitch's son i mean damn yeah now i ain't gonna be with you after that either you don't talk shit about my kid i don't give a shit what he is you know it's my kid i'll talk shit about my kid you don't talk shit about my kid right my favorite part, though, has to be when uh, Mother's Milk got attacked by the giant schlong. <laughs> that's that's what I was getting ready to bring up. Oh, my God. That was hilarious. I laughed so hard at that. Yeah, because I started looking at it. I was like, is that a penis? Oh, my God. That's a penis. That's the biggest penis I've ever seen. I, I don't know who that belonged to, but wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, you know, I, I'm very curious to see because Homelander basically lost his shit when Stormfront Liberty blew him off, and then you go mm -hmm. see him with the roses, and you know, he really lost his shit. And I, I'm very curious to see where this is going to go next week because yeah. I mean, it's like it's a web, I mean, it's a web of deceit and lies and evil. My yeah, I was gonna, my big curiosity is that 
like Homelander, as far as I know, doesn't have a weakness unless uh, the guy at Vought does have a weakness for him, but doesn't like nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. Because like, what is stopping? What is legitimately stopping Homelander from just going full like Super Hitler? Yeah, what is stopping him? Because I, you know, at this point, I thought he would have already. I mean, as far as I can tell, the only thing really stopping him is the idea that you know, um, his he works his for love. No, nah, I think it's more like his love of being adored, his desire for that public adoration. I think well, it outweighs what's going to happen when it goes because it's going to go. Yeah, right. He's he's cracking. He's not going to be able to hold it for much longer. People are going to see, and it's going to go. And I'm it, it's going to be terrifying when it happens. Yeah, I really need to read the comic more because uh, there's there's this there's a series in the comic that I stopped reading at because I didn't really like it called Hero Gasm. Um, I don't remember not lot why I didn't like it, but again, it was so many years ago. But it's um, the general plot is that the uh, all the superheroes on like a, on, a, on a giant um, uh, aircraft carrier, and they're just having a massive orgy. Fun. And uh, yeah, the boys like sneak onto it and go to do something. I don't. Rem I, I remember not liking it, but like my perception on it could change because I'm, I, I'm older now and a little bit wiser, a little, little bit wiser. Um, I know that hero gasm will eventually become a part of the show because the, the showrunner even said so, um, which, you know, I know is going to be your favorite thing. Cause it's going to be more sex stuff, but yay! <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a thing on Twitter the other day that was just like, uh, it was because uh, they were like there was a bunch of shit that was happening where um, it was a picture of um, Flynn from uh, Tangled with a bunch of knives around him smiling and it was like what unpopular opinion about this thing uh, would would get this reaction usually it was like video games or food or something to that effect but there was one that was like uh, film and this girl just says uh, sex scenes add nothing to the plot. They add nothing to the context of the story. They're just there for superfluous reasons and for men's eyes. And I was kind of like, I don't know about the whole men's eyes part, but yes, I agree. Like they're superfluous and not necessary. Um, yeah. And the only reason I say that about the men thing is because I, I know, I personally know a handful of girls that really like sex scenes, uh, but they're also very adamant on like, these are the girls that would do the, the TFO shit. Um, love old 70s movies and uh, I don't say exploitation films, but it's basically what they are, yeah. So I know that they're different <laughs> in that regard, but I mean, everybody is different. I'm not the same, you know, as every other female out there. I know that some do like the sex scenes, a couple of my sisters do, they don't mind it. It's just, it's my own personal hang ups, I know it. And uh, that's so why I said, like, I, I can take them or leave them. Like, like, she's absolutely not wrong. Like, sex scenes legitimately add nothing. There's a few sex scenes that are important um, to the plot, like uh, in, in Parasite, for example. Uh, yeah. Uh, but for the most part, we don't have to, like, I will say this the, there's, a, there's the sex scene in The Boys that is important, I feel like, and that's the one between Stormfront and um, Homelander the first time they have sex just to showcase their absolute immense power, even yeah. when having sex. Uh, but uh, all the other ones that were in the show was like, mm, I know they're having sex. You don't have to show it for a minute and a half. Yeah. Could totally live without it. <laughs> uh, well, any <clears throat> final thoughts you two on the, on the episode? I thought um, this was a really fun episode. I really enjoyed the whole backstory with Frenchie. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Weaponized Xanax. That's amazing. <laughs> That's a phrase I never thought I'd hear in my life. But Right? You know <laughs> I was like, say that again? <laughs> well, again, that, that goes into the ambiguity of good and evil sort of thing of, of the show that, you know, he, he chose to hate superheroes so much that he didn't take care of his friend and his friend died. Yeah. Um, so I totally agree. Like, I'm glad they showed that backstory because it, it allowed for the audience to kind of be like, 
well, I hate Homelander and I love like the boys. Like, no, 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 no. The only member of the boys that I even remotely go like, yeah, I like them is Mother's Milk. And even then it's at her arm's distance. Yeah. Well, everybody's human and everybody has flaws. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's why I say like I love the show because I don't love any character. Yeah. I mean, well, no, I like Huey. Huey. I like Huey. I wouldn't say I love Huey. He's a bit of a puss in some areas, but I do <laughs> like him. I, I very much watch shows and play games in a, in, a, in a different sense than most people where I, I never get attached to characters and I never look at like, oh, what in this character is similar to me? Because it doesn't matter. I'm just looking for character traits. And I say that that's different because I know a lot of people don't do that. Probably most people don't do that. Um, so when I'm, when I'm watching this show, I don't, I don't see myself in any single character. I might see slight personality traits or whatever, but like for me, Billy is a product of manipulation. He, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of trauma and manipulation. And then Homelander is a product of, uh, like uh, being an way, experiment. I mean, yeah, I, I was going to say more in the line of, of, uh, what is it called? Cause he's, he's, it's his nepotism is extremely strong. He, he never had the, the, the ability to grow a proper personality by being human. Yeah. And thought was always up his ass about everything. So when he looks at certain things, it's, it's, it's from a completely different light than like you or I would. Um, and, uh, I absolutely love that about these characters. But in no way, shape, or form do I see myself in them. Huey, on the other hand, like he is he's he's falling into a sense of extremism. And um uh that's not something I would do either. Um it, it's it's just that's what I love about shows like this. And uh I love seeing character arcs that are different. Um Yeah like we're going to talk about Lovecraft country in a second. And it's the same thing, like with tick and with Letty and with, uh, uh, the, the movie uh, ex father. I can't even think of his name suddenly. Oh, Montrose. Montrose. Like, I don't see myself in them at all, but watching their, watching these characters kind of grow throughout a season. That's what I love watching. Um, but again, it's, it's like video games. Like if, like, let me ask you this, Betty. Uh huh. When you play Skyrim, yeah, and you make choices for your character, do you make choices as your character or do you make choices as a character? Um. Well, because I've only played it a couple of times. I mean, I've got a couple of games on there. I do tend to play characters that do have similar dispositions to my own. It's like. I've played enough of Fable, I can tell you that all my characters are always good. I get really upset when people hate me for no reason. And I can't <laughs> even kick chickens in that fucking game. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, so, the way that I play games like that, and I have to use Mass Effect as an example because I I never really put a whole lot of time into Skyrim. But um, I come up with a character in my brain. I go, this character did this, this is their backstory, yada, yada, yada. And I make choices based on that, as if it's a D&D &D character. Yeah, uh, see, when I play D&D, &D, that's exactly how I play. But right. not when it comes to games, because that's me immersing myself into the experience. I don't want to be someone else. I want to be me. Right. I want to be me experiencing this, not, you know, someone yeah. else. But it's that's fun in D&D, &D because you can, you know, totally be a different person. And, and that's, that's how I like it. That's how I look at video games, and that's how I look at shows. I don't want those characters to be me. Yeah. I want it to be different. I want it to be completely different. So that's in a in in the longest way that I've ever explained that to anybody, that's what I'm saying I love about the boys is that none of those characters are me in any way, shape, or form. And it's a fucking trip and a half to watch this shit fall like unfold. Yeah, it really is. So 
if any if anyone understood anything that I just said, please let let us know uh, in in uh, on social media and whatnot because that was me rambling for God knows how long. Uh, <laughs> if you identify with any of these characters, you might want to seek some therapy. <laughs> I can see people saying like, I I understand where Huey comes from and I might react the same way, but like, I didn't have the trauma, you know, like I can see people saying that. Yeah. Again, I understand where he comes from. Doesn't mean that I agree with him or that he's anything like me. Right. Exactly. Cause I probably would have gone John wick on everybody's ass. So, uh, and if you, and if you see yourself associating with uh, Stormfront, go fuck yourself. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Fucking cunt. <laughs> God, I love her as a villain. Jesus Christ, she's a she does make villain. a great villain. Oh my God! All right, uh, final thoughts and grade go, Maya. I'm going to give this episode an A. I thought it was really good. I really enjoyed the uh, psychiatric facility and them infiltrating and the various powers on display. Uh, you know, I just thought it was a lot of fun. Um. I really enjoyed seeing Frenchie's backstory uh, and I really enjoyed seeing that uh, Mallory, even though she had Lamplighter dead to rights and has been wanting to kill him for five years, seeing that he's ready to die because he's been tormented because he didn't know that he killed her grandkids how it's been eating at him and now it's like okay so they've got somebody on the inside again um so it, it, i just love the aspects of the storyline and i like how it's developing and seeing the character development how it's progressing uh, another stellar episode for me i'll give it an a awesome uh betty um i would give it a b plus this time uh there was just a lot going on in this episode and I'm really hoping that they will tie some more of it together with the next one. But I think it definitely deserves, you know, like a B plus it's, it was a good episode. Absolutely. But there have been better ones in my opinion. So I will go with B plus. What about you, Greg? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right in between you. So I'm saying a minus. Um, I really, really, really loved everything on with, with Stormfront and Homelander. Uh, it really added some complexity to that entire plot thread. Um, I did really enjoy the stuff with uh, um, Frenchie's background and the asylum. Like it was, it was a very fun experience. Uh, but my only complaint would be that it it was a very busy episode, like you said, Betty. Um, yeah, there was so much shit going on, and uh, there was a lot to absorb at the end of the episode. And not in like a in in a in a very in a super great way. It was just kind of like, okay, I had to fucking think about what I just watched in in a in a more like complex manner. And it was like, oh, okay, well that's that's fun, and I and I don't dislike it, but you could all done that in a little bit different package. I feel like. Yeah, uh, they could have separated it up a little bit because there was just too much a little bit in that show. It, so. feels like, it feels like I don't understand the idea that Amazon has this show on their platform in the way that they do. And for some, for some reason they haven't taken the opportunity to do longer episodes. Like this episode felt like it could have been 120 minutes. That was jam packed into an hour, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, there's a new show that Amazon's got the rights to. They're supposed to be filming it now. I don't know if they are right now because of COVID, but it's uh, Will of Time by Robert Jordan. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I love that series, but I'm kind of scared about what Amazon might do to it. You know, I mean, they've they've had some great shows, but then, you know, the Wheel of Time, if you know, is 14 books. It's a lot of stuff. I don't know if they're going to do it justice, and that kind of scares me. That's I'm exactly afraid they're going to try and jam too much shit in each episode that you really can't do that. Yeah, I think I was going to say that's, that's something about uh, adaptations that I think bothers a lot of people is that, especially if it's a movie, um, if the source material is deep, 
then you know two and a half hours or two hours is not going to cut it um and i totally get that concern i i hope that with the track record that Nef- that Amazon has at the moment, that it's it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. It might not, it might not be the same experience you had with the book because you can't like you can't. Oh do yeah, I don't it. expect it to be. I mean, I know people are bitching over casting and shit, but Ugh. you know, yeah, you know how that goes. Yeah, but you know, I I do want to see because you know I think I think it would tickle Robert Jordan to see how they would do it. You know, and but his his books are also very female centric, you know, I mean, the, the hero is a man, but women have the power. So I'm not sure how Amazon's going to play this off. Gotcha. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Great episode from the boys. Um, uh, it's got, uh, two episodes left. Yeah. Cause eight episode season. Um, so I'm really excited to see like where, things will progress but uh yeah y'all should be watching the boys straight up absolutely all right let's go ahead and move on over to lovecraft country episode seven Mm -hmm. uh which was titled i am um so this was the most out of body episode so far (laughs) yeah it, it definitely took a different turn especially with the characters you know and who was prominent in it um i love that every single character that we've met in this show has some large role to play yeah they're not just bits you know yeah so, especially uh, uh the main character of this episode uh hippolyta hippolyta yeah hippolyta hippolyta it's pronounced so many different ways it depends on who, it's hippolyta i think is what they call her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what the fuck is up with that astrolabe? <laughs> <laughs> I I did have a little bit of a chuckle at the, um, I, whatever the hell she met. I don't know if it was an alien or not. I have no clue, but. That afro was amazing, though. Oh, it, was, it was great. I was just like, I was like, oh, are we, are we borrowing from, like, old 70s exploitation films for this? Is what's happening right now? <laughs> I mean, it was it was fantastic, and then her going through all those different eras. I mean, what what is this going to mean to her? What is this going to mean to the show? I mean, that part was absolutely fascinating to me to see her being all these strong women throughout history. But what the fuck is up with that astrolabe? <laughs> <laughs> my my curiosity lies in the idea that like what she experienced and who she met. I don't remember being part of Lovecraft's stories ever. They weren't. That's well, what that's, I love about that, it. That's the thing. You got to remember this is based on a book called Lovecraft Country itself, not Lovecraft's actual stories. No, no, no. I know that. What, what I'm get, The reason I'm saying that more so what I'm getting at is um, everything that has been used in this story is from some part of Lovecraft's book. Um, mm, or books, not all say. of it. Not all the, of it? No, the Korean episode, the Kumiko, has nothing to do. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I mean, it, that's why I think that, you know, even though this is Lovecraft country and it does exist in a Lovecraftian world, that doesn't mean other mythologies do not exist as well. So I like right. that they're drawing them in. Yeah, that's... Okay, I get your point. I, they, that, cause that was my thought process. I was sitting there going, like, where... Where is this like astral projection sort of thing in a Lovecraft book? But I completely for like again, that's why that episode last week was so good, was because it was completely it felt like it was completely divorced from the rest of the story. Um, I know it'll tie back around, but uh yeah, I was just trying to figure that out. But you guys are absolutely correct, like it doesn't have to stick to just Lovecraft. No. And you know, while they have those Lovecraftian elements in it, not sticking to Lovecraft is an excellent move on their part because oh, yeah. he didn't live long. He didn't write a shit ton of stories, you know, so you've got to draw an ad if you want to 
survive in the Lovecraft realm because most Lovecraft adaptations do not work at all. This one is fantastic. Right. It's, um, I was going to say, I, I do have a question about the machine though. And, and again, is that, is that, is that in Lovecraft or is that, uh, completely different? Uh, as far as I can remember, I do not believe that there was an astrolabe in Lovecraft, but it, there could be. I do know that there were devices similar to things like that. So, you know, it, it, it could possibly exist in that world, you know, that, but it, it's also most likely something they've put into it. Okay. As I, like I said, I haven't read everything by any stretch of the imagination, everything Lovecraft, I just have some knowledge of it. And I'm like trying while I'm watching the show, enjoying the plot threads. I'm like, Oh, well, what, where was that in a Lovecraft story? But like, you guys are now like, mm, it wasn't. <laughs> no, I mean, and honestly, if, if you want to read anything that's based on Lovecraft, try compendiums and anthologies by other writers because they do it better than he did. And I hate to say that about him. He was a good writer for his time, but like Brian Lumley has um, a whole novel of short stories based on Lovecraft's world. An excellent book, excellent book, but better than Lovecraft in my opinion. <laughs> I've, I've heard, I've, I've talked to quite a few people who are just like Lovecraft started something good and like, did it terribly where other people have taken his ideas and gone and done better stories on. Them. Yes. That's um, the truth. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, 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 the whole thing with um, kind of going away from uh, Hippolyta, um, you know, Montrose, or I guess I should say uh, Letty and, and Tick like running and are like catching Montrose um, with his lover. He Did on the down low. I'm, I, you know, I know that it's the fifties, and I know that it's a different thought thread, but I'm a little disappointed in Tick. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing. It is the fifties. That's what everybody was taught to believe. They didn't yeah. believe that, you know, it was possible for a man to love another man in such a way, or a woman to love another woman in such a way. Yeah, you know, hasn't will, always been like that, thankfully, but Christianity right. ruins a lot of things. Well, I think that's what's great also about that scene is that, like, you've watched Tick this entire season uh, be very progressive when it comes to uh, people and race and stuff like that. But then, like, uh, like you can be progressive in one spot and still be completely uh, bigoted in another. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know it's 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 nice to see that you know you can show that contrast um, because you know everybody does have flaws as people in general. So it's nice to, I mean, it really in that time, how do you think you would have reacted if you grew up in that era? Wholeheartedly. So it's 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 an interesting thing to see. Yeah. Uh, it was sad. It was. I think that's another thing about this show that I, I really appreciate is is and and it's going to sound weird, but how legitimately sad it is. Yeah. What? Well, you know, for people of color back then, yeah, life was not a bed of fucking roses. No, it's still not. No, it's still not. You know. I mean, it's like, you know, we tell people all the time, oh, this is nothing new. This has been happening forever. You just didn't have a chance to see it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, but, I'm, I'm really interested to see, because like, while the, all this stuff was going on with Hippolyta, I was like, what happened to Tick? Did he, like, he had to have gone through the portal. And he did. What all we saw was him go through the portal. And then him come out of the portal with a book. Yeah, and, and and it was oh he did come out with a book. He didn't show up with that book. Well, he left with a book that was on the astrolabe. 
I didn't, thing, see him em- like- I didn't see him emerge from the portal holding a book. I'd have to go back and rewatch. Um, the only reason that I noticed it was because when he uh, when he came through the portal, he was standing there and looked at the book like he like he was surprised to have it. Um, if he if he went through the portal with the book, I didn't see that. But I, I definitely like it seemed kind of odd to me that they zoomed in on the book for like a like a half a second. I thought it was laying on the machine there. It might have been, and I missed it. I'm I'm totally like I, I it's more or less that he like that book is now going to be important to in some fashion. Oh yeah. Um. Also, next week's episode is going to be really rough. Really rough. I didn't because, watch the preview. I never do. Uh, it was more or less the fact that um, uh, George Freeman, his daughter, or I can't remember the, his daughter's name. The, D. D. Yeah, yeah. The the book. Um, Dina. That's right. That's her full name. Uh, the comic book she wrote has her name on it. it says D- Dina Williams. Yeah. Or sorry, Dina Freeman. My bad. Why I say Williams? Because of Letitia fucking Williams. Oh yeah, you're right. There you go. Uh, yeah, like like it it in the preview it showed um, cops harassing her because you know they found the comic on a dead cop. So that's gonna be rough. Yeah. Well, maybe Ruby will use her magic white people potion and fix shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, they yeah, have fucking. I know that, like in that trailer, everything is coming to a head. Like that next episode is going to be heavy, and I'm not just talking about in the implications of racism stuff like that. I'm talking like plot shit. Like yeah. every character has a role now. Every character going to be heavy, and I love that they're like. So we took a little bit of the break on the strong racism, but we're coming back with it full force because don't forget that's what this fucking show is about <laughs> like uh-huh got it i'm looking forward to next week oh, very much so this is honestly one of the best shows of the year i was gonna say i was gonna say over like in a long time but honestly the last show that i felt this way about was last year on the same service which we'll talk about next. All right. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Um, uh, Betty, why don't you go ahead and give your final thoughts in a grade? Um, I'm going to give this one an A simply because of the Hippolyta scenes and the astrolabe. It was just so visually stunning. And what's going to come next with all of this I'm, I'm going to be fascinated to see it. You know, can other people do this with it as well? What's going to happen? Who's going to use it? You know, so yeah, I'm very interested. And then I'm also interested in, you know, what what's going to happen with D. You know. Yeah. And is Atticus going to forgive his daddy? Yeah, yeah. I hope that. Yeah, Jesus. So much, so much. Uh, Maya. I'm going to give it a B. Uh, for yeah. some reason, I could not get into this episode as well as the others last night, and I don't know why. I don't know. I, I can't put my finger on it, but it didn't captivate me like all the other ones have. Visually, it was stunning, and it was interesting to see what was happening to Hippolyta. And, you know, I do wonder, okay, where is she at the end of the episode? And I wonder, you know, what happened with Tick? during that time where they disappeared and he reemerges, but I don't know, man. I just, something about it just didn't grab me. I don't know why, but that's a personal thing. You know, I can't say it's the episode's fault. Understandable. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it an A, uh, cause I, I feel like pretty much everything that Betty said, I, I mirror, um, I, I absolutely fucking adore this show, like up and down. Um, I knew that it was going to be like over the top with shit. I was not expecting the sci-fi angle. 
Like, I know that you could consider sci-fi to be part of, like, the whole Lovecraftian horror element, but to me, it's horror. It's not sci-fi. Uh, it's a bit of both, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's why I was saying, like, to an extent, because it, it totally is still technically sci-fi. Um, but this was, like, strong sci-fi. Uh, oh, also, you are correct. He did emerge from the portal, grip, clutching that book in his left hand. Okay. That's what so, I thought I saw. Um, yeah, because yeah, it, it was also written by. Really fast. It was written by George Freeman, if I'm not mistaken. Let me zoom um, in on that. Yeah, please do, because I'm pretty sure that's what I saw. But yeah, like, uh, um, like when she discovered like the 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 key that was inside the 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 the, the device, like the, the display. Yeah, um, and. Uh, she uh she heads out and 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 tick is like able to find her and like just all that stuff leading up to hippolyta's journey was just it was so fucking fun um there was just i like i don't know i i can't get enough of this show it has been it has been a wonderful trip we had three more episodes to go like this was seven yeah. of ten <laughs> yeah so. let's Let's hope there's a season two. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll I mean, we'll definitely see. I know that, uh, um, you know, the show that we're going to talk about next isn't going to have a season two, but I yeah. can't see why this show wouldn't. But then again, you know, we're Not, you know, we're yeah, we together. still have three episodes to go, so it's hard to say what will happen in those three. Yeah, but based on what we've seen so far, and you know, I, I hope there's more beyond this. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to the final subject of the day. Um, Betty, so you watched all of Watchmen over the past yes, couple weeks. Yes, we did. And we highly enjoyed it. It was, um, um, it was a good it. show. I didn't know jack shit about it going in. Jeff had more knowledge about it. He's seen a movie or something. That was based yeah, on it. Zack Snyder did a version of, he made a movie and it released in 2009, I want to say. Um, yeah, nine or 10 maybe it sure. was t- 2009 or 10, somewhere in there. I know Madison was a toddler, um, but it was, it was based on the original limited series, which was a 12 issue limited series written by nine. Alan Moore. It was 2009? Okay. Yeah. I thought so. Um, and for the most part, it was a scene-for-scene, panel-for-panel recreation of the comic with the exception of one major twist. Uh, in the comic, uh, Ozymandias, uh, he has gathered all the world's top scientists uh, artists, movie effect artists, uh, writers, and made them think that they're working on this giant uh, creature for a movie production. It's actually a giant squid, and in the end, he teleports this giant squid into New York City and immediately kills like half of the population of New York. Three million uh, people. Yeah, yeah. And the idea is it's going to unite humanity against a common threat. In the movie, they change that to where they make the teleportation look like Dr. Manhattan caused it. Yeah, like it was a, it was an A-bomb of, of oh. some sort, uh, which was the worst part of that movie to me because the squid was important to the entire idea. And I'm, I'm so happy that the show used the squid, but uh, Betty. So my question to you is um, what were your thoughts on who the villains were and who uh, um, like how, how Rorschach's followers, if you will, and how they acted, like what was your thoughts on that? Well, of course I didn't like them. Fucking <laughs> white supremacist assholes, and you know, 
As much as I hate Kanye West, he is correct. No one man should have all that power. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know, I from the start, I was not digging the Warshack people, but I was very confused about um, the FBI agent. What was her name again? Lori. Uh, oh, Lori. <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on there, and then I figured out that she had been Mr. Manhattan's girlfriend, and that's kind of how he turned into who he was. So, um, kind of, kind of, yeah. Because so, uh, they don't really talk uh, about it in the show, but like how he became the the creature that he is with Doctor Manhattan um, uh, was an accident that way before she was even born. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, that that occurred to him in the 50s, and uh, when he met her, he was already Dr. Manhattan, and she was only 15 years old. Okay. So, yeah, it went into some creepy level stuff there. Uh, I have the Blu-ray of the movie, and I also have the original comic collected in trade paperback form, and we're going to my sister-in-law's Saturday Mm -hmm. So if you want, I can bring both of those and loan them to you so you can check them out and see the differences and gain more context to this show. My uh, my only argument, uh, like I, I do recommend that, but my argument is that when you're watching the movie, um, something that always bothered me about the movie that the comic di like did a lot better um, is it muted uh, Rorschach's bigotry. Um. And, and the reason I know this, I point this out, is because when the show was going on, Betty, and uh, uh, Maya and here were, watch were watching it week to week, I was noticing a trend on, the so on social media. And that was people who were fans of the comic were very angry at this show. But not in the way that, like, would be, you know, reasonable. It was always Rorschach wasn't racist. Rorschach wasn't a bigot. And I'm I, and I go. Did we did we read the same fucking comic? Did did we? Because I can absolutely assure you that Rorschach would have been a Trump supporter. Absolutely. Oh God, yeah. White um, polos and khakis, man. It was insane to me how many times I saw people defend Rorschach. Uh you remember that, right, Maya? Mm-hmm. Like it bothered the shit out of me. I was like, I was like, if you're defending Rorschach, like people would sit there and say, like, Rorschach wasn't that type of character. Rorschach wouldn't have done that. And then people would point out and with evidence of his bigotry and, and racism and whatnot. And they would just immediately say, No, that's not how it was. Or, yeah, I know how he is, and I agreed with his viewpoints. Like, if you agree to his viewpoints, say the fuck away from me. Right. Um so I'm 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 really happy the show like took it seriously, took his viewpoint seriously. Yeah. But I remember that like strongly that people were just so fucking angry with how they presented Warshak, and I'm like, he wasn't a good guy. <laughs> like, he was a fucking. Um, uh, that was the big thing about him in the comic was he he wasn't he wasn't smart. He wasn't a good detective. He stumbled upon all this shit. Yeah. But. Because he was lucky, like it, like people misinterpreted that. I guess as he was smart. I don't. That's just so weird. Yeah. Well, just because you're smart doesn't mean you're nice. <laughs> true. Oh, that's true. I never considered him smart personally. Like to me, Lori and and uh, or Silk Spectre and, and Night Owl. I can't remember. Dan Dreiberg. Dan, thank you. Jesus Christ. My brain was not finding the name there. Uh, yeah, they, those two were representative of like when a society is falling apart and then the ones that just sit by or uh, look out for themselves. Yeah. Like that's another thing about this show and comic is that there really is no like I mean the com the, the show is a little bit better, but the, the 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 comic is very much like there is no good guy, bad guy scenario. Because uh, um, Ozymandias 
uh, he's, you could argue he's the bad guy, but you don't know that he's the bad guy until the end of the comic. Well, you know, and the thing is, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Isn't it? His intentions were good in a way. You know, because it yeah. kind of did focus people on a common enemy. And that's something I've always thought. If aliens came to Earth, we'll probably stop fighting with each other and start fighting with the aliens instead, you know? Yeah. I. Mean, but going back to, like, you know, the boys, even people with superpowers are human. They're still human. They have human emotions and human thoughts. I mean, even, you know, Dr. Manhattan, obviously he could fall in love. He, he understands that, you know, it's yeah. a weird kind of love, but it was love. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the, the one thing for me that I didn't pick up on, by the way, Betty, uh, was that he was Manhattan the whole time. Um, the reason I didn't pick up on that was because they never like gave it explicitly. Like they never gave major clues. Uh, however, there were some clues. So yeah. um, I didn't pick up on it either. So don't feel bad. <laughs> there's a, there's a black exploitation film called black Superman. And the main character's name is um, what his name was. I can't remember. What the fuck uh, was his name? I don't know. I just know him as John now. So yeah, <laughs> Cal Abar, that's what it was. So it was, yeah, his the 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 character the character's name in that movie was named Abar, and then the fact that his first name is Cal, like as in Cal L of Superman, yeah, and and uh, and that's the thing also about about the Watchmen universe is that there are no other characters with superpowers other than Manhattan. So that was there was a, there was a few clues, but I right over my fucking head. The Utopia thing was weird. Oh, that was rad. Yeah, I was like, what is happening? He's pulling living babies out of the water and tossing them. What is going on here? You know, <laughs> I was like, what is this? And, you know, it was funny because he wanted to be sent there, but after eight years, he's like, fuck this shit, you know? Yeah. It's like, be careful what you wish for, dude. <laughs> well that's that's the hubris of, of adrian Vite is that he he's the smartest man on earth but he's also sometimes an absolute fucking idiot oh god yeah i mean when he was throwing the bodies up into the air and stuff and <laughs> spelling out you know that that was hilarious his daughter was an interesting character too i wonder if her mother survived I don't know. That's, that's a good question. Uh, that unanswered questions that I was hoping we would have answered in a uh, hope for season two. And man, I just so upset because I wanted to see, you know, they alluded to night owl, Dan driver, Lori's love interest, um, you know, to being in prison. I wanted to see what had become of him. I wanted to see more of this universe and it just absolutely, was a punch to the gut when they said no more watchmen oh you're kidding me this is horrible yeah well you know i have to say you know and we talked about this before about endings and how i feel about them this one i i was okay with it you know i mean the way it ended was so ambiguous but i also i was okay with it i was like wow mm -hmm. you know we don't know, but that's kind of cool. So yeah, like I was trying to explain this to my mom because uh, um, she recently got really into watching certain things, and because I because I kept mentioning that I saw Tenet, and uh, she was like, "What other movies has that guy done?" And I was like, "Inception, Interstellar, The Prestige, Memento." And she goes, "Should I watch those?" And I was like, "You haven't watched those? I thought you watched uh, Inter or." Uh, uh, inception she goes i don't know so we watched a trailer and she's like i've never seen it i was like all right well fucking it's on amazon go watch it and uh she ends up watching it and she fucking loves it like she's like this is so i mean it's a mind trip it's fucking crazy but like it's great and i was like yeah and no, i agree 
And, and uh, so we got into a conversation about the end of that movie where it's unsure if Cobb is in a dream or, or, or not. And she goes, yeah, why did they do that? Why, why did he make it so that way uh, you don't know? And I said, that makes you fill in the gap. However you want that ending to go is correct. Yep. And uh, so we talk, started talking about ambiguous endings. And I said, my favorite ambiguous ending, like, is not even from a Chris Nolan movie. My favorite ambiguous ending is from No Country of Old Men. I haven't seen that one. Uh, well, if you haven't seen it, then I'm not saying an absolute fucking word about the movie, but it has an ambiguous ending. That's all I'm going to say. And I, oh my God, I love that movie. Today. Is it worth watching? I think so. Okay. It's worth watching once. I watched it for the very first time a few months ago. Well, I will have to give that a try then. Oh, wait, no, no. I'll take that back. I watched There Will Be Blood, not No Country for Old Men. I still need to see No Country for Old Men. Yeah, there's... Uh, when you guys watch it, we'll have a conversation about it because I oh, fucking not only is that movie great regardless of anything, but um, I'll put it this way. I've talked to tons of people about that movie and have pointed out something to them about it that they didn't pick up on. So love it. But anyway, um, yeah, so, we, yeah, so he's going to be testing us. I don't know about testing, but definitely want to see if you picked up on it, too. Uh, oh, and by the way, Dr. Manhattan has a huge dick. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was shocked at that. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Splitting ladies in half. Um, For no, I was going to say that. Uh, <laughs> but I was going to say, like, the, the, the ambiguous stuff of the ending of this, you can you you get to fill that out in your brain. You don't yeah. have to have the questions answered for you to have like, well, I want this and I want that and I want this to be the ending and you're correct. Yeah. Like it's all up to you. I personally love the idea that um uh the main character, Regina King's character, what the fuck is her name? Angela. 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 Uh, Angela I, I love the idea that Angela stepped into the pool and just fell in. That she has no powers. Uh, the reason I like that idea is because I think that she's stronger without powers. Um, well, maybe it just takes a little while to kick in. <laughs> but hey, if you if you saw her walking on water and gaining Manhattan's powers, great. You're right. But also, I'm right. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll it's tell you one thing, Matt. I, I absolutely loved Tim Blake Nelson's character from that series, Looking 100%. Glass. Loved his character. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I, that's what I was going to say. That we the were guy that about. had the silver face mask that made it look like oh, he was on Oh Brother Where Art That, which is one yes. of my favorite movies. Yeah, absolutely was. They loved him up and turned him to a horny toad. She's mine. I saw her first. <laughs> I need to watch that movie again. I watched it twice in my life, and it was like when it came out and like when it came out on DVD or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I the love goddamn, that movie. I'm the goddamn pedophilias. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I love that fucking movie so much. Well, you do know it's it's a southern retelling of Odysseus. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's. It was such a fabulous movie. I watch it occasionally. I, every year I watch uh, Fried Green Tomatoes. This is my absolute favorite Oh, my movie. God. Really? Absolute favorite. Oh yeah. Movie. Yeah. When I'm ha when having Misty a bad makes time, fun of me. everybody makes fun of me for that. I love that movie so much. But Tawanda! Face it, girl. Mm -hmm. I'm older, and I have more insurance. <laughs> I mean, I know this movie pretty much line by line i love this movie so much but i also love uh oh brother where art thou that's one of mm -hmm. my favorites as well i mean it's just so good and i love the music too um i was trying to remember who made oh brother where art thou and it is definitely the, the coen, coen brothers. brothers yeah because mm -hmm. i was gonna because i was gonna say out loud i was gonna say like i love the coen brothers movies um but i was like wait a minute did they make that movie i don't want to sound like a complete idiot so i had to look it up real quick but it is um, fabulous. Here's the funny part is when you go and look at the writing credits for Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? It's Joel Cohen, Ethan Cohen, and Homer. 
Yeah. <laughs> yep. So. Because fantastic. that's what it's based off of. That's awesome. They recognize them. Uh huh. <laughs> um, yeah, I was gonna say like if we're talking about the Coen Brothers movies, like we can get into a long discussion about those movies because every single one of them is fucking fantastic. Maybe not everyone, but it's us. Uh, I love it. Yeah, that one's fabulous. I think I'm gonna have to watch that soon. I think I'm gonna make my spawn watch it with me. <laughs> yeah, Did you ever I've watch been wanting to watch it again. We uh we reviewed a uh, movie that was on Netflix um that that uh, the the Coen Brothers had made called The Ballad of Buster Scraggs. Did you ever? Oh, that was that? a good one. Okay. Yeah. I love that one. That was the last movie they ever made. Oh, really? Yeah, they. I, <clears throat> as far as I can see, they they they're not even working on a new movie. I hope they didn't retire. Okay. Uh, oh, brother, we're out there. It's available to watch on Amazon. Hey, yeah. look at that. Guess what I'm watching after we get done recording? I'll probably watch it when I get home from getting my... Well, I got to drop my car off at Walmart. Jeff's going to bring me home after that, and then I guess we'll go pick it up later. I don't know. I, completely I hate this forgot shit. That, I for, completely forgot that No Country for Old Men is also made by the Coen Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm looking at their... Oh, the Lady Killers. I remember that movie getting hated, but I liked it. I liked it, too. I thought it was cute. They made uh, two two stellar hits like back to back with Fargo and Le- and Big Lebowski. Yeah, those oh, are man. excellent movies. I love the Big Lebowski so fucking much. So somebody just kind of slightly off topic. Somebody on Twitter kept um, every time he uh, Donald Trump would would interrupt uh, Biden, um, he would post a clip of uh, John Goodman's character saying, "Shut the fuck up, Donnie." <laughs> Oh yeah, I saw that one. I was cracking up. Uh, they also made Raising Arizona. God damn! Mm-hmm. Another good movie. I love the remake of True Grit that they did. I don't think I've seen that one. It's good. It's very good. Yeah, and, it was. And then one of my favorite movies that they've ever done, Burn After Reading. That's a yeah. goddamn masterpiece. Have you guys seen um, Sense8 on Netflix? Not yet. You should really try it out. I, it took a couple of episodes to really get into it, but it's a beautiful story. It's amazing. And they ended it after three seasons, but my God, it, it'll make you feel the feels. And I've, it'll um, make you scream, going, "Yeah, kick his ass!" <laughs> so it's it's funny. It's funny you mentioned Sense Eight because uh, I was talking to Michelle about the um, oh, uh, what is their last? Why am I drawing a blank on the fucking last name of the of those of those sisters? The shit. The one who made the Matrix. Yeah, why am I trying to play? Wachowskis. Which of the Wachowskis? Jesus, thank you. Uh, we were talking about the Wachowskis because um, it was it was. I thought it was about, pronounced Wachowski. I've always heard Wachowski, but it could be Wachowski. Um. Either way. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Um. They. Uh, it was it was talked about on Twitter that the Matrix <clears throat> is an allegory for transgender people. And I had never picked up on that. And I thought about the movie and I thought about the trilogy and I went, it fucking is. It absolutely is. Well, yeah. And I could see it. And so Michelle and I got into a conversation about all the other Wachowski movies and, and, and stuff that is an allegory in a way for transgender people in some fashion or form. And I'm like... Even Speed Racer? Even Speed Racer. Um... There's actually like a whole dissertation on it, um, but more so Cloud Atlas and and uh, um, uh, what was the other one they made? Jupiter Ascending. Mm. Uh, even though Jupiter Ascending is very much disliked, but very much also Cloud Atlas. But that's when Michelle was like, "You have to watch Sense Eight. You have to see what Sense Eight is, because it, if you think yeah. if you think the other ones are an allegory, I was like, oh, oh Jesus, all right." Sensei is beautiful. It is moving. It's it makes you think differently about the world and the people around you. And I mean, I can't even describe 
how wonderful this series was and why they stopped it. I have no idea. There were so many people upset. I'm even a member on the Sensei group on Facebook. You know, I mean, it's, it's definitely worth the watch. Absolutely. Check it out as soon as you can. It's, it's, I, I'd say like for me right now, it's difficult to, to watch a show that I like that we're not doing for the podcast. Yeah. But, um, what I'll try to do after a little while here, when things calm down a little bit in on, in my life, is uh, like spend an hour a day watching an episode until I catch up with the show. And by catch up, I mean finish it. Yeah, that's forward. a good idea. Yeah, my life's hectic at the moment too. <laughs> sure, y'all heard them dogs barking. Yeah. Our a uh, little Scarlet just every time there's some excitement, she has to bark. Like my parents are big Raider fans, as both of you know. And because fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> and every time every time my mom cheers and claps for them, she has to fucking run around the house barking, trying to figure out what the fuck's wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's Milo. Anytime anyone, you know, gets excited for any reason, that dog goes nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we doing this now? Are we? What's happening? Yeah, and if, like, Liddy and I are play fighting, he gets really upset, and he tries to stop us. It's cute, but it's also annoying. Yeah, I bet. Like, I know it's, yeah, because we have a chihuahua, so the bark is a little bit more high-pitched. You know, it's like, right now we're watching Vanna. Get down, Vanna. She's a uh, Dotson, a dapple gray Dotson. She's a sweet dog. But she's finally getting comfortable enough to where she feels like she can bark and stuff, too, now. So now I got two little dogs barking. <laughs> I'm like, well, yay! <laughs> no, you are not allowed to lick my face right now. <laughs> I was going to say, the, the the funny thing is, like, I say that about my chihuahuas, you know, being loud. But if I'm being honest, like, when I'm over at my buddy's house and their dogs fucking decide to bark and they're both um, large dogs... I, do, I could not legitimately tell you what's worse. The high-pitched, real sh barking of a chihuahua or the loud fucking, I'm going to make your whole ass fall out bark of a big dog. Yeah, well, that's Mowgli. He's our French bulldog. And while he's not a big dog, he does have that bully face and voice. He sounds like fucking Cujo. Jesus. I mean, it's terrifying when he barks and we've had people come up to the front door and we don't typically use it because of the dogs and i mean they will go nuts and it just sounds like i've got a pack of hellhounds in my house <laughs> i want a pack of hellhounds you know i want a pack of hellcats which i actually have because i have 13 so <laughs> It's funny we you had said 28 cats at one point. It, it, it was not by plan. It was, or not 28, but 25. Uh, we had three Still. female cats, and they all three birthed litters of six at the same time. So we went from having three to 21 within a week. And then before we could even get those, we had like four strays come around. And we couldn't not, you know, take care of them, so we fed them. But fortunately, we rehomed all of them but the three and got two of them fixed. But the one was too old to get fixed. But it was it was uh, a hectic several months. Yeah, well, we only managed to rehome one of the two litters. Um, so we got stuck with the cats and... Because we got two from Jeff's old office that were kittens, that were feral. Then we got the first litter of five from daisies that somebody had left out. People move in and out and leave cats. And then mm. she had another litter. And we, keep, we kept trying to catch her and spay her. And she wouldn't have it. So we ended up with... Um, both of those litters and only one of them was a boy. So we call him Alistair Catley. He is the leader of the coven of the cats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we're around. weird. No, it's dude. I, 
I grew, I grew up with cats myself. I I, uh, I remember when I went over to Michelle's house for the first time before MAGFest in 2015. And uh, she was like, make sure you keep an eye on Frank. Like, he doesn't like people and he might scratch you and da 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 da. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so he's, so he's that kind of cat. Got it. And she goes, well, like, I don't want you to get hurt. And I was like, I won't get hurt. I promise you I won't get hurt. She goes, why not? And I said, I, I grew up with cats. I know cats very well. I know like their temperament. I'm, I'll be fine. I was over there for literally a month and a half and never once had a problem with Frank. Not one fucking time. The entire time that they lived with Hutch, Frank always fucked with Hutch. It was so funny. Oh my God. He'd be streaming and all of a sudden he'd be screaming because Frank fucking lost his mind and ran in there and grabbed his leg. Hey y'all, I have to go. Um, Let's wrap this up. I just then. found out there's been a death and my sister's trying to call. So, okay. oh no. Let's, yeah. So, okay. I love you guys and peace, love, and Polly Pops. And I am out. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go take care. Do take care family stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll do the outro and we'll talk to you later, Betty. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, that's horrible. That sucks. That absolutely sucks. Um, sometimes real life happens folks. Um, yep. you know, we apologize, uh, that you just heard a little bit of real life. Um, yep. Uh, anyway, Damn. yeah. My thoughts going out to Betty and her family right now. Yeah. I, I let's, yeah. let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, yeah. We'll Sorry to uh, end on a down note, everyone, but yeah, you if, know, if anyone's, we'll be back. Curi anyone's curious about the show, who watches it and, and wants to keep an eye on her, I would imagine go to her Twitter account, which is at Bright Betty, and go to her Facebook, which is Betty ba uh, Betty Badger Ogletree. Um, yeah. Uh, Facebook is Betty Badger Ogletree. Uh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. that uh, if you want to keep in contact with her and see what's going on and, you know, I don't know, maybe, she, maybe she'll post something, keep you all updated. But that's where you're gonna do that. But, but yeah. Uh, well, hey, let's just go ahead and we're gonna be covering Ratchet on Netflix next week. Well, uh, I'm gonna so say I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're gonna try, but with what we're gonna just try, <laughs> but with what just happened, yeah, I don't know how much of it she got to watch. So, uh, we we'll get to watch. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll see what happens. We're going to yeah. have to play it by ear. So if there's anything significant that occurs, we'll put out a Twitter update. Absolutely. Uh, and, and all of our socials are going to be down below, and we'll make sure to keep you guys posted. And, and I did try this week to uh, get a little bit of interaction on the Facebook I group. I saw that. I saw that. I just I had to... nothing to contribute to it because, you know, we're watching the same things. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was less for you and more for our audience. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, no, that was that was good. But so yeah, we'll we'll I'll we'll, we'll try to do something again there. But uh, um, yeah, I don't have any ideas yet, so we'll see. Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else. I know that we're going to definitely still keep watching uh, Lovecraft Country and the Boys. <laughs> I know that Boys has two more episodes and Lovecraft Country has three. So it's weird that Boys came out after Lovecraft Country, but we'll be finishing it before the Boys because of the three episode drop. Yeah. Uh, but that's funny. Uh, and then in the next month, guys, um, you know, we'll be covering Mandalorian as well. At least Maya and I will. I don't know how much Betty's going to be interested in that one, but hopefully. Well, I mean, she's she's down with Baby Yoda, so. Yeah, and this is a very far removed from traditional Star Wars, so she might be in, into it. Yeah, um, I think that's I think that's best for Star Wars. Honestly, is just like the more divorced from, uh, divorced from the Force. I wouldn't say from the Force, <laughs> but definitely divorced, divorced from the Skywalker from the, saga. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Divorced from the Skywalkers, absolutely. At this um, point, yeah, at this fucking point. But uh, my dad watched it. My dad started started. Uh, catching it because i know that he wanted to for a while but just never found you finding the motivation and recently he watched the whole fucking thing from front to back and uh he loves it so i'm excited to watch season two with him uh 
I'm trying right. to think of anything else, but I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what are your socials, jo- uh, Maya? Uh, they can find me on Facebook, and everything is linked publicly. Uh, <laughs> you know, getting jarring news like that, it's hard for me to think of anything. But the show links will be down below. Uh, what about you, Greg? Uh, Trub Rock Geek on all socials. Uh, I'll be... Uh, I'll be talking. We'll, we'll both be talking with Betty and seeing how it's going on, and keeping an eye on that because uh, we're concerned about what's happening. So we'll definitely um, try to keep you guys informed as as much as she wants you to be informed. But uh, yeah, if you want to if you want to keep an eye on that stuff, like I guarantee we'll talk about it on socials. Um, if there is a delay for next week's episode because of this, we will also let you guys know as much as we can. Uh, Right now, again, like like Maya said, we're playing it by ear. Yeah, one one day at a time. So, all right, uh, all right, everybody. Uh, try to take care. Try not to lose your mind with this upcoming month of election shit, because that's also going to be a fucking nightmare. Ah, uh, well, you know, we did watch that crazy debate last night. Uh, God, good lord. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Hopefully we'll see you next week. Uh, Keep watching The Boys in Lovecraft Country, and uh, we'll try to talk about it. Um, And and Ratchet, if you have the time. Uh, Because we're going to talk about that eventually. But uh, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.